thank you so much for joining on this very warm day in yeah. Austin, Texas. My name is Amanda Johnson. I am the founder and executive director of Torch Literary Arts. I am pleased to be here to celebrate Juneteenth in our inaugural program, Carrying the Torch, yeah. a Juneteenth Remembrance and mm. Reading for the Future. Woo. Mm. It was very important for us to be here in front of the African American History Memorial here at the Texas State Capitol yes. uh, so that we could have as many black women's voices on as many occasions here to implant our words and our power into this soil. This is not the first time that we are here. Right. We have been here, we helped build this space, we helped build this city. Talk about it. We made this the beautiful destination that it is. Right. And our creative writing words and letters continues to amplify and magnify the power of this space. Right. So heat, cold, or right. otherwise, <laughs> we ain't going nowhere. Right. <laughs> We have some incredible readers who are going to share um, with you, but I also want to share um, one poem that stays on my heart. If you know me, you have heard me share this poem, but I will share it as many times as possible because I truly believe it does magic for the people who hear it, people of color especially, and black women in particular. This is Won't You Celebrate With Me by Lucille Clifton. Won't you celebrate with me what I have shaped into a kind of life? Mm -hmm. I had no model. Mm. Born in Babylon, both non-white and woman, what did I see to be expect except myself? I made it up. Yeah. Here on this bridge between starshine and clay, my one hand holding tight my other hand. Come, celebrate with me yeah. that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. Thank you. So I'm going to welcome our uh, first uh, speaker and reader, uh, Stephanie L. Lang. Yeah. Stephanie L. Lang is an incredible community activist leader. She is the director of DEI initiatives at the University of Texas. She is fighting to keep the history alive of freedom communities all over Austin. She is an incredible writer, poet, scholar, and friend. One of my dear, dear friends. Please help me welcome Stephanie L. Lang.
And I'm really grateful for this opportunity just to be still with this, right? Because I am concerned sometimes that because of everything going on with Juneteenth, even before it became a national holiday, where is the time to kind of think about the actual people, not just this swooping like these are the people that were enslaved, but who these people were or might have been and all that they endured and the way this trauma has continued, right? The way this sorrow has continued, but this balance of joy and pain and joy and sorrow that they found that encourages all of us. So those are some of the things that that I think about and um, really inspired at this point that I've only read three times. I read on uh, Juneteenth 2020, I read as part of a art installation called We the People, and I'm reading it now. So I appreciate your, your energy. Yeah. All right. 1619, 1863-1865. A powerful mixture of joy and despair hangs heavy in the air, love and purpose, calling to be touched and consumed, woven into the landscape, under deep soil and rock, under frenzied loops of smoky practices and double speak, lazily hiding painful and ugly secrets under paved streets and new buildings. Sitting fragile on wounded and weary earth are the chorus whispers of women and men, children and babies, daughters and fathers, mothers and sons, poets and musicians, healers and pastors, pottery makers and artisans, farmers and ranchers and vendors. From then till now, they speak to us, guiding us to breathe them in through full lungs and elongated bodies, to push past convenient lies, to release confined truths catching each one as they seep slowly between closed lips, giving salves to hearts worn weary from the repetition of sorrow and untruths. The heaviness fused to our skin. To center and unleash ourselves to commune with them on this bittersweet day of origins late and venomous. This day of contemplation and reflection this day of broken promises and triumphs, this day, kin to all days, in our fixed pursuit of liberation, steeped in hope and injustice. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. So I do want to add, too, being here in front of this memorial is a powerful reminder mm -hmm. of everything that we have survived. Yes say that again we survive survive but we are on our way to thrive yes if we were able to go from the back side of this monument in history to the front side and you look over here and you see Barbara Jordan and you see our, our leaders and community who built us up in a time when that was not possible mm. and many thought how dare they dream a dream so big this monument ends there, but we don't. Right. Right. We continue. And our writing and our words are part of that continuation. It is not just our poetry, our short stories, our creative writing that is for us to consume and enjoy today. They are documents that we leave for the future yeah. that show the world that we lived in and the world that we dare to dream and imagine. So thank you. Thank you for laying that ground of that foundation. I also want to take a moment to do some quick thank yous. Um, I want to thank Representative James Tellerico who sponsored us to be here on this ground in front nice. of the monument. Um, I also want to thank the National Endowment for the Arts who have provided funding to support Torch Literary Arts in fulfilling our mission to amplify the voices of black women writers. And I want to thank you all again for showing up, braving the heat. It's going to be hot anyway. Yeah. You might as well do something good in it. Right. Um, and I want to say uh, we have another part of the program after there down just down 11th Street at the African American Cultural and Heritage Facility there are cool rooms there will be a DJ there will be food and another round of reading so please travel over there carpooling and rideshare is highly encouraged okay all right well up next I'm gonna bring up another dear friend 
an incredible poet, not just here in Texas, but world-renowned world poet world that we are lucky <laughs> to have had be part of our Torch community from the beginning, from the very beginning. The Ebony Stewart is an incredible author. She is the author of Blood Fresh and Homegirl Hood. She is a scholar. She is a community worker. She has been a social justice sex educator, uh, making sure that we all have the knowledge that we need to empower us in our lives. And we are happy to have her with us today to share a word in our celebration to further carry that torch forward. Please welcome Yay. Ebony Stewart. <laughs> okay, so real quick, can y'all just give it up for Amanda Johnson? Anytime, anywhere, I'll follow her to the. Oh no, I'll, I'll follow her anywhere, honey. That's that's just how it works. <laughs> um, the the real thing is though, also is I do not live here. I live in Houston, Texas. I am always here. Austin will not let me go. I lived here for 13 years, and then y'all just was like, now it's forever. And I'm like, <laughs> well, my address say something different. <laughs> Regardless, um, I get into these, and I was telling Amanda about this earlier. Like, I get into these debates about Juneteenth now that it's a federal mm, holiday, right? Yes. And it's been very interesting to have these conversations with people who don't know about Juneteenth that live outside of Texas um, and their argument, and these are black people, one of the arguments is that, you know, y'all are celebrating the fact that you got the news late. And I'm like, <laughs> as a person who born and raised in Texas is like, nah, we're, we celebrating freedom. That's what we celebrate. News yeah. or no news, late or on time. You know what I mean? It's it's when it was necessary. It's when it happened. It's a part of the history. And at first I thought that I was going to read this poem at the other site, um, which I might still do that. But this is my first time being up close on this monument. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. The torch is happening. We got torch right here. We got, you know what I mean? People in the shirts. You know, so it just feels super, super right. Um, this is also my response to because this is how I fight. This is my, my civil rights uh, activism is poetry, right? This is how I fight and how I respond to people. So this is Jubilee. It's very new. I'm going to read it to you all. If you hear it later, just act like it was the first time. <laughs> <laughs> give me the parades and marching bands. Negro spirituals and praise dances. Give me djembe, kente, and pom-poms. Afro picks, raised fists, chanting we shall overcome. I want to see red, yellow, black, and green. Matter of fact, I want all black and southern everything. Give me matching t-shirts, swing outs, and a line dance. Dominoes, spades, belly laughs, and foot races. I want to see locks, cornrows, head wraps, kinky curly coils, and box braids. Hair beads, waist beads, sweat beads, swinging towels, and the black African-American heritage flag flying high. Give us the sun in the sky. You know how I feel. It's a new dawn. It's a new day, and I'm feeling good. Give me poetry, rappers, banners, and big signs. I want HBCUs and Divine Nine. Strolls, shimmy, sound offs, and step shows from Galveston, Texas, and any park in the nation, because you already know it's a family reunion. Yes. Give me AABE, Ebonics, yes. and Southern slang. I want Sister So-and-So, a brother whoever, to sing whatever, and someone to yell, and you better sing, baby, I want Mr. and Mrs. Juneteenth, because when the saints go marching in, I want pastor and the elders and blown kisses at our ancestors that came back as red birds. I want to see and hear the children with stained lips and mouths full of laughter. I want barbecue pits, fried fish, collard greens, mac and cheese, and whoever make the best potato salad on one plate. I want, <laughs> I want the first bite to make my head nod and body shake. I want watermelon, sweet potato pie, red velvet cake, pound cake, tea cakes, ice cream, and or a cool cup for whenever I get that sweet tooth feeling. I need a red drink and the spilling taste of emancipation with a side of resilience. Get spirits for the spirits and pour out a little bit for my dad homies and the ones that came before me for the past, present, and future for centuries of struggle and all enslaved black people for inhumane working conditions and the need for equality, intentionality, and commemorating traditions to provoke understanding. Mm -hmm. Special connection.
connections, help and healing, a loving embrace, tears, black joy, and although we've come to the end of the road, carry it on now, carry it on. It's Juneteenth every day until freedom. It's Juneteenth every day until freedom. It's Juneteenth every day until freedom. It's Juneteenth every day in my heart yes. until freedom. Thank All right. you. God, I mean, thank you so much. Yes, it is Juneteenth every day until freedom. We know the quote, um, we're not free until everyone's free, right? And we know that there are a lot of people in this world who are not free right now. And so you being here in this space, showing up just to listen is a powerful action that many people don't have the choice to do. Let's not squander that. Let's celebrate that and love and support for each other. Another thing to notice is do come and, and look at the detail on this monument and see our history, right? But at the top of this monument, you see a male figure holding that torch up high, lighting the way forward. And right at his side, holding up the Emancipation Proclamation itself, is a freed woman. We represent those free black women. Those words on that paper were powerful enough to set an entire people free. Never, never, never discount the power of the written word. Yes. Thank you for coming. Please join us at the facility for more readings, some food, a cool room, and get out and see some. All right? Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. All right, all right. How we doing? Yeah. You say cool? Yeah. Did y'all get something to eat? Yeah. All right, all right. That's what I like to hear. We here to feel your heart and feel your body, all right? Yes, you Thank you. Thank you. They did a wonderful job. Y'all check out Michelle's uh, catering. They got signs over there. We love to empower and employ black-owned, black women businesses. Yeah. All right, well, again, for those of you who weren't down at the Capitol, my name is Amanda Johnson. I'm the founder and executive director of Torch Literary Arts. Thank you for joining us for carrying the torch, a Juneteenth remembrance and reading for the future. I am so incredibly happy to be here with you here at the African American Cultural and Heritage Facility. I want to take a moment to introduce our incredible host here at the facility, um, Florinda Bryant. Lorena Brown is not just the programs manager here at the facility. She is also an incredible writer and artist and creator and holding down the ATX since I don't know how long. But it's beautiful because of the work that you do. She's also the chair of Torch Literary Arts, so we could literally not do this work without her. Please welcome Florinda Brown. Hey y'all, y'all make a round of applause for Amanda Johnson, of course, it is. Um, I've had the pleasure of walking by her, my sister's side, watching her create many beautiful things, um, but what she's doing for Torch and for black women, for herself and for the future women to come is just amazing, so we can never, I am so proud. She makes it easy with that to um, So I just wanted to say thank you for showing up and to welcome you here to the African American Cultural Heritage Facility. Um, the facility has been closed for three years, um, so we just reopened. It wasn't something that the city had a plan to do, uh, but something that they hired me in August and I quickly went about changing. Um, so I just wanted to welcome you here, invite you to come back. I invite you to find ways to, uh, <laughs> if I don't have a program here being offered, I challenge you to help me get it here. Um, we have Gaquera classes. Look to the look, look, look. Oh. <laughs> We've got uh, Gaquera classes. We have African Warrior Arts is housed here. Uh, Dorian Lassad, Project Abundant Life, Wolf Yoga. We have Flourish Counseling. Uh, so Homegirls Healing, which is happening this Saturday. We have a host of programming and community uh, events that are happening. And most importantly, everyone take a look to your right. This is the Dietrich Hamilton House. It is a historic house. It is a crown jewel of the uh, Six Square Cultural District, and it has been closed for four and a half years. 
Um, that is something else that I'm proud to say we have changed. Uh, so before you leave, please make sure that you take a look at the exhibit that we have inside. We'll be, we feature some fire art, but we also feature our photographer, Larry Choice, has a, a modern Juneteenth exhibit that's up, so we're very blessed and fortunate to have that. Um, I just wanted to say thank you all for being here and welcome. And uh, we're going to bust it open the door now, so I look forward to seeing y'all back again for more. Right. Enjoy the show. All right, the doors is open, she said. Let's get busy. Let's make some magic. I want to also thank the City of Boston Cultural Arts Division for funding Torch Literary Arts and making this incredible work possible that is also paying like women artists. Can I say yes to that? Get a round of applause for that. We know so many times our art, our labor, and doing that joyful work is also still very underpaid. So thank you to the City of Austin and Thrive Grant for funding us so that we can make sure that we pay and support the black women who are doing this incredible work. I also want to thank, again, the National Endowment for the Arts for supporting Torch Literary Arts on a national level. This work is based here in Austin, Texas, but we accept submissions from around the world. We are incredibly fortunate to support and pay writers, black women writers who are doing this incredible work outside of the US as well, and all of them turning their heads and looking inwards towards Austin, Texas. That work happens with support from the National Endowment for the Arts. I also want to thank the Bertie and Johnson Foundation now a longtime supporter, our first major donor, who is now re up with us for a second year in a row. So thank you to the Bernie Johnson Foundation. And I also want to thank individual donors like you. Every single bit counts, you know, when it comes to running a nonprofit, from the large donors to the five dollars a month pledges, every single bit makes this possible. So thank you all for giving and thank you all who are for considering giving in the future. It means everything to us. And now, without further ado, I'm going to welcome up our first reader here at the facility. Y'all know Tova Charles. Tova Charles is the CEO and host of the Austin Poetry Slam. Round of applause for that. Keep it going. Another inclusive, incredible space that welcomes voices at all stages of their careers to get on the mic and share their talented work. And she has been sharing her own work in the city of Austin for many years as an educator, as a supporter, as an advocate. And we have her here right now with us at this beautiful facility. Please welcome Tova Charles. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Thank you all. For, I'm so excited that this space is available again. And if you are uh, wanting to come to Austin Poetry Slam, we're every Wednesday at the Mueller in, uh, at the Mueller. We are at the Mueller, but at the Alamo Draft House in Mueller. Uh, every Wednesday, you can go to AustinPoetry.com for more information, and then now poems. Okay. Uh, a prayer to renew my blackness when white folks try to convince me that I am not enough. If you are offended by this poem, I have written it just for you. It is, I thought about you, and I was like, hmm, I'm going to write this poem <laughs> right here. So I hope you get offended. Uh, no, just, just kidding. All right. Dear God. <clears throat> Thank you for making me black. Out of the rainbow variation of people I could have be a part of, you made me black. Mixed with black. Damn, God. You a real one. Even though some of your cute people try to make this black sound like a bad dream or some kind of poison sitting at the bottom of endless joke, but I just think they mad. They mad. Because you built them without rhythm, so they cannot hear your heartbeat. Thank you for giving me hair that looks good no matter what has been done to it and skin that don't burn. Oh, Alpha and Omega. Why would you let them burn like that? That is a strange thing to not protect your people from the sun. Thank you for making the universal call a black one. One that I'm out here, hey, hey. I know that my people are near. Thank you for making yellow the international color of black girls. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for Regina King and Beyonce and Bun B and Meg the motherfucking Stallion and Holy, Chloe and Hallie and for Drew Hill and for Lauren Hill and for the Soul Food soundtrack and for the Waiting to Excel soundtrack and thank you for my black mama. Thank you, Waymaker, for making my mama both black and from the South. Thank you for reminding me that the black that the South ain't for everybody, that I ain't for everybody, but ain't we fly anyhow. Thank you for not just making me black, but a black girl from the South. Thank you for making me all this fine and know how to cook gumbo and bake macaroni and cheese, letting the flick of my wrist. 
first guide my food to a seasoned perfection. Thank you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, for chicken and watermelon that we do not eat in front of white people because they do not deserve to see how we break bread with our holiest of foods. And thank you for making me proud and black and black and black and black. And thank you for making me funny. <laughs> thank you for helping me keep all this rage inside of a laugh. Thank you that laughter was a cure. Thank you for making my tongue as sharp as my nails. Thank you that making sure my words kept me alive. For now, I shall. Thank you. All right, I'm going to give you one more because I can't talk about blackness and not dedicate one specifically to black women. So, uh, I say all that to say it's right here. Boom. <laughs> Amen. For Google Drive. Okay. Here we go. Some people think they know all about black girls, but I bet you didn't know that black girls can run for fun. We swim, build things with our hands, birth babies, tuck our babies in, have a college level debate with a six year old on what makes up our DNA, and losing the debate because I love a good debate, and my daughter will be the one that saves the world. Between our eight to fives, when we have to listen to our boss tell us how much they love The Wire, and grad school, when we have to listen to our professors tell us how much they love hip hop, and how we are so brave, and how my life should be quiet, and how I, sh and how I should hold space for everyone but me, because they are not as strong, and I am not as weak. Black girls say, the black girl's prayer. Dear me, I am loving myself the best way I can, Lord, if others are calling for me when I have not sent for them, then please, please, Lord, let them know that they are fucking around and are about to find out. Yeah. In the midst of the enhanced enchantments we cast to protect our loved ones, we pray that we don't kill our said boss or professor so that we are able to tuck our babies in tomorrow. When the black girl gets their black girl's body, we try to warn them that their bodies will represent every, when ev what everyone wants, but they will never be what, but they will never want your voice. Yeah. That their mouth will be weighed down by every burning body before them. Little known fact about black girls: sometimes we dance badly, sometimes we sing badly, sometimes we laugh so loud that our bodies turn into pure light. All of us know how to prepare for the worst because the worst is something com always coming, bearing our children, bearing our fathers, bearing ourselves. Yes, sometimes we are just black girls. No, you cannot touch our hair. No, you cannot copy our bodies without paying a toll. Sometimes we too are tired of talking about slavery and racism and sexism. Sometimes we too don't want to think about how our great great grandmothers kept master's children fed in his bed warm. We know that cages and beds can look the same by candlelight or jail cells or dorm rooms. No, our skin can bring out the worst in people so we know how to save our families with the only weapon we got sometimes. Black girls but I hope, know how to hold our womb and tongue in silence, convince ourselves that we don't have enough time for depression or stress or what happens if my strong black cake falls apart at the seams. So instead, we know work. We know not enough. Black girls carry trauma like it's a fucking crown and heritage and herned. Black girls know how to be the life of the party even when we know we were only invited to be the help. Black girl skin don't crack, but sometimes it dies. Sometimes full of light. Thank you so much. Oh my God, another round of applause for Tony Charles. Full of light. We live full of light. Thank you. All right, let's keep this going. Up next, we've got the incredible Ebony Stewart. Ebony Stewart is an incredible author. She is Texas own. She is carrying the good word of Houston and Austin. Outside of Texas, internationally, she is recognized for her incredible books, Blood Fresh, A Homegirl Hood, and more. You can check her out on her website at ebonystewart.com. But we got her here right now. Please give it up for Ebony Stewart. Let's get into it. My name is not convenient. It is the forgotten child stolen from historical value, a burden to the grief that haunts you. Before my name could be full and brave, it was lynched and barbecue skeptical. My name has been raped, branded, and whipped. My name is a chocolate milk titty your baby's home to and from a forgotten protagonist, a forgotten fact. Did you forget how the stories go? My name is how easy it is to misplace the 
truth, to strip me of all this mighty so I could be a life under servitude. My name is a reminder of nigger children who get murdered in the South, in the North, in the East, in the West, because my name is a threat. My name is an axis in your amen. And did you forget how the stories go? My name ain't never got a pass. Kate got too much oil flick, too much scratch punching fight. My name is real confrontation. Ain't interested in your comfort. Well, my name bite too hard. Must have been caged. Must have been animalistic once. My name is only necessary after it benefits you. You say my name ain't right. Well, mama say everything that has a beginning begin in me. Time my blistering queen say my name is a filter. Now the light gotta pass through me. My name is a giant. It's rise. It's healing. It's learning to remember itself as the Congo, the beaten sound you dance to. My name is utterance of struggle, meets pride, meets grace, meets visible. Yeah, you see me reinventing myself, reclaiming my power. My name is the hero that freed ourselves. My name is newborn Negro and new growth. My name done trying to figure out why you don't love me. My name is a wealthy affirmation. My name is what blackness has been through and can be. My name say I can't be impossible because I be in existence. Come on. Ebony. Here we go. This poem is about joy. It's not about water remnants, evaporation, sand, a thirst, a dry fruit, a hinges, or being hung today. No one died on the sidewalk, in the street, in the hands of a police officer, a guard. Today, a little boy is able to play outside and be a child with a full imagination. Today, the only time he was asked to put his hands up was to show us how he looks when he pretends he's flying today. A black woman could smoke a cigarette, could laugh, could do whatever she wants to do with her hair. Nobody tried to kill me today. No one black or dark skin or the wrong shade died today. Today, the only time we were made to come inside and gather and tell stories. Remember when every day was a funeral, a sad song, and a eulogy over today. The only time we cried was when we rejoiced. The only hashtag we used today was joy. The handkerchiefs only wanted to fill the faces of the ones who cried with joy. This poem is about joy. It's not about fear or anger or sadness. Them emotions come to us too easy. It's not about glass or porcelain or fragile things or being weak or tired or broken. This poem is about joy. How long it stayed how we remember it in us, always. Okay, remember Woo! what I told you? I said, I'm gonna read this poem here and then you're gonna act like, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll friend, because we had this conversation already. Right, right you excited? Like, y'all too, right? Okay, yay, okay, great. <laughs> Period. So, um, <laughs> all right, here's the thing. Um, I was actually tasked to write a poem about Juneteenth, and I was like, how am I gonna write this poem? And then I had this whole argument with this black person that's not from Texas, and they was like, oh, y'all like celebrating that y'all got the news late. And I was like, mm. I also just don't like you said it, because um, it's ironic. I don't know, it just feels ironic that you like making a joke out of something like that, silly. But, <laughs> any hoot. So this is that poem, Jubilee. Give me the parades and marching band. Negro spirituals and praise dances give me djembe, kente, and pom-poms. Afro picks, raised fists, chanting we shall overcome. I want to see red, yellow, black, and green. Matter of fact, I want all black and southern everything. Give me matching t-shirts, swing outs, and a line dance, dominoes, spades, belly laughs, and foot races. I want to see locks, cornrows, head wraps, kinky curly coils, and box braids, hair beads, waist beads, sweat beads, swinging towels, and the black African-American heritage fl flag flying high. Give us the sun in the sky. You know how I feel. It's a new dawn. It's a new day, and I'm feeling good. Give me poetry rappers and banners and, and big signs. I want HBCUs and Divine Nine. Strolls, shimmy, sound off, and step shows from Galveston, Texas, and any park in the nation, because you already know it's a family reunion. Give me AAVE. Ebonics and Southern slang. I want sister so-and-so, a brother whoever, to sing whatever, and someone to yell, and you better sing, baby. I want <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Juneteenth. Come on. Because when the saints go marching in, I want pastor and the elders and blown kisses at our ancestors that came back as redbirds. I want to see and hear the children with stained lips and mouths full of laughter. I want barbecue pits, fried fish, collard greens, mac and cheese, and whoever make the best potato salad on one plate. 
Right. Yeah, I, I, I want Yo. the first bite to make my head nod and body shape. I want watermelon, mm -hmm. sweet potato pie, Amen. red velvet cake, pound cake, tea cakes, ice cream, and or a cool cup for whenever I get that sweet tooth feeling. I need a red drink and the spilling taste of emancipation with a sign of resilience. Get spirits for the spirits and pour out a little bit for my dead homies and the ones that came before me for the past, present, and future, for centuries of struggle and all enslaved black people for inhumane working conditions, the need for equality, intentionality, and commemorating traditions to provoke understanding, oh, yeah. special connections, help and healing, a loving embrace, tears, black joy, and although we've come to the end of the road, carry it on now, carry it on. It's Juneteenth every day until freedom it's Juneteenth every day until freedom. It's Juneteenth every day until freedom. It's Juneteenth every day in my heart until freedom. Thank you.